Hey everybody, I am Stacy. I'm the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy, and I'm a, an elite Dixie Belle retailer here in Ardmore, Alabama at the Rustic Willow. And um, so as you guys are just jumping on, just say hey where you're watching from. I'm going to give it a sec just so I know. Oh, let me see. I think we are live. So as you guys are jumping on, like I said, just say hey where you're watching from. Uh, in the description, I do have uh, what colors we're going to be using tonight, as well as um, there's a link to my Facebook page so you can see finished pieces. I'm actually going to show you guys the piece from last week here in just a second. Oh, hey, Philippa, how are you? All right, so of course we know we're live now. I'm seeing the comments start to pop up. Um, so, like I said, there's also my affiliate link, which you can find your local retailer there if you want to find any of these products, go in and see what else we have available. Uh, also, um, the Dixie Belle Mineral, Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group link is there. Um, tons of amazing artists, inspiration pieces. You can ask questions on there. Uh, just everything you need to know. Um, and then also... We also have the DBTV now, um, so you can get it on like the Android and Apple device, I think, and quite a few other things. Um, so tonight, just to get started, let you guys know what we're doing. Um, Dixie Bell, by the way, should be on with us as well to help answer any questions. Um, and of course, if I miss anything, I'll go back after the live and uh, I'll go back after the live and... Um, go through and make sure that I've answered everything. So tonight, you guys, so last week, we actually used a London Blue Moonbeam and um, Blue Agave, which gorgeous. It's all done over here. It's been protected. Um, I'm just letting the protectant set up so that I can go ahead and age it out, do the wax and everything on it. Um, so tonight, we've got this piece. Um, guys, I had a lot of stuff going on last week. Um, I had my two granddaughters and my mom had COVID, so I literally got nothing done. Um, so I'm kind of almost in the same spot where I was, except for I've got two other pieces um, outside that I'm working on, or in the garage. Um, so tonight we're actually going to work on this piece here. And what I've got already is just one coat on this piece. This is, um, let's see, it's Daffodil, Marigold, and Bougainvillea. Um, that's that beautiful pink color. Uh, so this is just one coat. Um, this is a laminate piece. It's wood, but it has that laminate overlay over it. So I did do some slick stick on it. I also did a raised stencil up here with the Lotus Bloom. I don't think you can really see it, but once we start painting, it should um, become more evident. But I do have that raised stencil here. So we are actually going to do over this a coat of... London Blue, let me take this out. We're going to do a coat of London Blue, Cerulean Blue, which I think I spelled wrong in the description, and then also Lanny's Lagoon. I don't think I'm going to use quite, a mu quite as much of that as I thought. So this is a little piece that I did. We're kind of going for the boho look behind here. This is a small piece I did in these same colors. Um... But I did a little blending. I ended up with a little green in here. Um, so I don't really want that. So I did go ahead and put a coat of the Terra Matte over this so that this clay base coat would not reactivate. I just, I want it more boho. I just want these colors peeking through. Um, so that's kind of where we're at tonight. And... We're going to go ahead and start. I'm just going to be using some natural bristle brushes. I don't want it to look exactly like that jewelry box, so I'm still kind of um, experimenting a little bit as far as where I want this to go. I'm going to maybe get down a little bit. Hopefully, you can see pretty well. How's everybody doing tonight? You guys are so quiet. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I think towards the bottom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using the darker colors just for shading. So, like I said, I'm using the natural bristle brushes. Um, this paint really works best with that. And I'm just going to kind of go ahead and I'm going to kind of go in a, um, oh, I can't think of a 
the word right now. Uh, kind of like a linen crosshatch uh, thing here. And I'm going to go ahead. I've got vinegar water. I've got vinegar and water. And then I've also got my water bottle here. So hopefully I don't get them confused. I should have put um, some of these away. And I'm just leaving that peeking through. And then I'm going to use a different brush for each color. So I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting with this cerulean blue. I kind of want to blend it in. I'm going to do it nice. Blend here, kind of make it a little bit streaky still. And I did this section over here and it's dry, but I want to go ahead and reactivate it. So I'm going to mist it with a little bit of water because I just want to bring some of this cerulean blue in. Just really want to mix that in. All right, so now I want to actually pull back a little bit of this um, so that we can see kind of that um, bougainvillea peeking through. And actually, I didn't quite get right under here. I want to add a little bit more there. And I'm just doing a very light dry brush over some of that molding. So what I'm doing now is this is still wet, and I'm just dabbing it with a baby wipe here. There's a lot of different patterns and things you can do to kind of pull back on some of this. Um, another thing that will make it separate pretty easy is vinegar. And I really kind of like the half and half uh, so that it doesn't completely separate. Just want that peeking through. I just kind of want to pull that back. You can use like a sea sponge to do this. Um, I can actually go through and add texture with like bubble wrap. I've done all of this though. I didn't quite like any of those looks. Hey, Nettie, how are you? Oh, thank you. All right, so we're just gonna go over here. Like I said, I don't exactly know. I haven't 100% decided where I'm going with this. And just so you guys can tell, see how dark that looks on that side? This side right here is already dry. It dries a lot lighter than it looks. And quite frankly, it really looks dark on this on the camera right here. So I'm kind of lightly running my brush over here. I want quite a bit, I think, to end up peeking through here. So I'm kind of putting it on a little bit thick and I'm just kind of dry brushing. I'm not really trying to work it in too much, spread it around. Put a little bit more on here. So we're gonna come back in with some of the cerulean blue. So you can dab this on to blend it. Like I could do a little bit of dabbing. I mean, texture is always nice. I really like, and I'll also, I always go over a lot of the places that I've already been just to add a little bit more of the layered look. And this paint, so this clay paint, um, is not a self-leveling paint. It's um, a really, it's really an artist paint. Kind of going back and forth with my paint brushes here. It's really easy to blend because of the way that it reactivates. Let's go in with a little bit of Lanny's Lagoon. I kind of want to see how it looks kind of down here at the bottom. I just want to brush on some highlights to kind of bring out some of these edges here. Kind of give it a little bit more dimension. So I accidentally kind of got over into the side a little bit. So I'm just gonna come back in with my London blue, kind of dab and get that in there. i run a little bit. I do like this as a highlighting color. Um, it's like I said, it's going to dry lighter, so it's not going to be as obvious. Just going to brush kind of some of that on here. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna kinda of take my vinegar in here. This is straight vinegar. I really want this area to kind of separate a little bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of put it in here and I'll bring you guys in close too so you can really see what this is doing um, once it actually dries. So I just want it to show through a little bit here and there. I can even wipe it back if I want to bring a little bit more of that out. So we're going to go ahead, whoops. Just going to come back in and highlight this a little bit more. So I've got my straight water now because I just want my piece to be a little bit wet whenever I'm putting this paint on. This paint is very thick. Um, I don't know if you can tell here, but it's an extremely thick paint. Very forgiving. Like I said, I'm just, I only want a little bit of this to peek through. I just need a little bit more water. This paint will, it, this paint absolutely, the, the terra clay paint absolutely requires a um, protectant on here because unlike the chalk mineral paint, this paint will always reactivate. It will never um, fully cure without that protectant. Um, so that's why whenever I did the jewelry box, it all blended together and it ended up blending into those greens. I had some purples in there. Um, so we're going to come back in. I don't know if I'm going to really use a lot of the, of the Lanny's Lagoon. I think I'm just going to use it to highlight. I really kind of like. I'm gonna, and by the way, this is just my base. I'm actually going to come in and, this is just my base right here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do some stenciling on here. I don't think I'm gonna end up, I might do some transfers. I'm not really sure. I kind of have something in my mind, but I'm gonna come back and stencil with the Bougainvillea, the Marigold, as well as the Daffodil over here. So I think, let's go ahead and pull back a little bit, kind of right in here. See how that just dabs right off and I, I'm getting that, and you'll really have to see it when it's a close up um, to get the full effect, but then I'm gonna come back through I kind of want this to look like it was painted and then as time went on it just kind of the top coat just kind of wore off a little bit and you can kind of peek through and see you can just kind of peek through and see this under color so we're coming back in with some London blue. And again, I'm not going for full coverage. It's kind of this cross hatch pattern. I think actually I'm going to come back over here and go a little bit darker. I think I might follow the color, kind of the color flow that I had. Uh, with the underneath colors, so paint's a little bit thicker here than I want it, so I'm going to just dab that back so you can see some of that marigold come out underneath. We're going to come in with some of this cerulean again over here. This paint blends beautifully. 
Uh, I was kind of playing with it a little bit earlier using the Best Dang Wax, wax Brush to kind of do a cloudy look. Um, that looked fabulous. It just comes together so easily. the big dabby brush on this but I really was not 100% sure where I kind of wanted to go with it so got a bristle in here it's the only thing about the natural bristle brushes I tend to lose more bristles especially if it's a cheap one these um Dixie Belle premium chip brushes are really kind of less likely to do that but um still happens Go ahead and spray this. And I should have a few drips that are eventually going to come down because I'm working from the top up here. So leave some of that showing through. This is going to really look, it kind of looks a little blotchy because of the way that it dries. It dries so much lighter. I'm trying to wash out these edges a little bit. And I'm actually using that half mix of the vinegar there. You can see how it separates differently than whenever you just use the straight water. to get this pretty streaky and I think this is probably going to end up with a few coats here normally I only like to do two coats if I can get away with it if at all possible but I think to really bring this together um, this is probably going to be a three coat piece to really get all of this layering in here I might be able to again with the cerulean blue and when you get into this marigold color I I wish I kind of would have only um, done the, the marigold and the bougainvillea I'm not too hot with how this I'm not too excited about how the yellow looks through here but I don't have a lot of that that daffodil mixed in um, So I think I can kind of cover that up. Spray it with a little more vinegar and water just to get that kind of showing through. And what will happen is when I come in and I start to age this, after I've got it all painted, I had all my stenciling over it, this is going to come together really nicely, even though it looks kind of patchworky right now. want to dab this off and this clay paint also it does take a little bit longer to dry um, so I'm coming back in with my water now and just spraying that whole top section oh that thing kept going See, just make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see. Yep, I'm not seeing any questions so far. Um, I 
And I meant to put a little more water on it, but that was vinegar. So that's going to change a little bit how this goes on. Um, just want to put, just kind of following my colors from before. Now, right now I'm doing a, cra a cross hatch as well. But when I did my first coat, I dabbed it on. And by doing that, I've created some peaks and valleys for when I'm dry brushing like this, it is catching on those and it's showing when you're close up, it's showing a little bit more of, um, a little bit more of this, these under colors than what you can see on the camera. So let's go ahead and just kind of highlight this. You can come in and dab. It's all about just what you want it to look like. I want to pull some of this back right up here. Like I said, those drips aren't bad. You can pull this back in a lot of different ways, too. You can actually pull it back with, um, with like, I've got some sea, sea sponges here. So it pulls back a lot the same. The sea sponge will pull it back a little bit more. Um, you can also do a little blending with the sea sponge. When you're looking for that old world finish, these are great. Wrong bottle. So water, this is just water here. Just reactivating. So usually where you have like your, um, you have some shadowing up here. So I'm just coming up here with the London blue, that dark blue. Just adding a little more texture to these areas. I've got the cross hatch. I've got my paint going in several different directions. I'm kind of switching my brushes out between the colors. I'm just not applying anymore. So coming back in with the London blue. On with a little bit more cerulean right through here. Ooh, look how beautiful that looks up there. I really need to bring you guys in. When I look at the camera, I can't, it doesn't quite look the same way that it does in person. outside of my norm. Not necessarily this um, kind of boho look, but the way this color scheme definitely. Um, I love my blues, but usually I am not so bright with it. Let me give it a little bit more blue on that trim so you can really, well, let me bring you in some because you cannot really see this raised stencil on here. 
and how beautifully this is showing through here. Gonna put some more water on. And where I've got my paint really thick is where I'm actually coming in and pulling it back some so that these colors show through. just using the cerulean blue. I haven't used a lot of the Lanny's Lagoon yet. I'm leaving a little bit more of these colors showing through because I'm going to actually come in and stencil these brighter colors back on. So instead of pulling back, you can actually dab like this too, and you can still kind of keep some of those colors out there. I'm not messing with the top too much just yet. So I'm going to come in with a little of this Lanny's Lagoon, but I want to do it more of a dry brush. So I'm going to kind of wipe the excess off just on a shop towel. Hey, Helen, how are you? And we're going to come in and just highlight some more of this. Putting, when you're doing a piece like this, I mean, layering is definitely key here. I'm very lightly feathering this Lanny's Lagoon over. The reason I'm not putting it on too heavy, too, is I'm really not liking it as much as I thought I would with the daffodil. So I'm kind of trying to keep it away from those areas a little bit. Um, this is a textured piece. Um, it looks pretty smooth where I, where I can see it on camera, but it is textured. So when I'm lightly feathering this over, all those peaks and valleys I've created, um, it is catching on those, but it's also still wet. So it's blending a little bit as well. Um, I want to come down here. Just want to highlight some of this trim here. Like I said, in some places it's blending, in some places it's doing more of a highlight there. When I'm streaking it in along the drawers, it's doing a little bit more blending. So when this dries, and I'm doing it very carefully because this is already starting to dry a little bit, and it's in that state where you can actually pull the paint back if you're not too careful. But all of this, whenever I come in and I do a glaze on it, all of this is gonna catch that glaze and it's gonna give it a lot of dimension. Still looking crazy right now, but it will come together. I want to streak this in over. So you can see, hopefully, let me bring you down. 
and hopefully see where it's catching on a lot of these points. And I know it looks crazy, but it is all going to come together here. It's just a matter of layering it. I didn't get a lot of blue in over on this side just because I can't see it very well. Um, See this highlighting. And I should have actually brought my heat gun out so I could dry this and kind of give you a final, more of a final look on it. Just kind of bringing all of this together. Very lightly dragging those colors around, letting them catch. And it looks really blotchy because where your paint, this paint does, like I said, it takes longer to dry and it dries unequally. So like right here, this is still completely wet, but all of this is the same color. It's gonna dry exactly like the rest of this around it. Um, it's one of the hard things I had with, with painting with this paint. Um, whenever, cause I'm, I'm so used to constantly reworking the same areas and the chalk mineral paint drying so quickly whenever you're layering like this, it was kind of hard to get used to this. Um, I'm actually gonna come over here because I've got some spots where I didn't get in. You wanna let this dry too before you protect it for about 24 hours, this clay paint. Um, you do put it, you can put it on with a brush and I did brush it on with a brush um, every time that I've used it. But it does, um, if you overwork it too much, it will reactivate and pull back. Thanks, Philippa. It will reactivate and pull back. So you just want to be a little bit careful there. So you guys, this was a short live. Usually, um, usually it takes me a little longer here. I'm just painting this underneath section. So I can get that same, that same pullback. So let me go ahead and bring you in so you can kind of see how those colors are peeking through. Um, and hopefully once I bring you in, you can see it's not nearly this blotchy. When I look at it on camera, I'm like, oh my goodness. But you can pull in and kind of see where all of these colors are just kind of peeking through. And actually, you know what? I really kind of, normally my lives are a little bit longer and I wish I would have gotten my heat gun out because I would actually come back in and go over. You can see where this raised stencil is. These, the raised portions of this stencil are actually going to be the same. Um, it's going to be the daffodil, the marigold, and the, um, and the bougainvillea as well over this. So hopefully you can kind of see though how that, how those colors are all peeking through. Um, and I'm definitely gonna end up going back and doing probably a dry brush coat on here, um, which I also did with this little box that I showed you originally. I came back in with the Daffodil, Marigold, and Bougainvillea. Actually, I'm gonna see. I think this bottom left corner down here, we have some time still. I think this bottom left corner is kind of dry enough. I think I'm gonna go ahead with the time we have left and just do a little bit of the dry brushing over here to really layer this in. So give me just a sec here. 
And these were the original colors on here. That's the Bougainvillea, the Marigolds, and the Daffodil. So you can see they're really, they're really pretty bright. And of course, this one is closed well, and I did not get out my... Ah, here we go. Here it is. So here is the Bogan Via. And let's just come in. Like I said, this is one of those things like a lot, a lot of times with the chalk mineral paint, you can get away with just going back to back. But that is definitely not something I have been able to get away with yet with this, uh, with this clay paint. I definitely have let it dry, I have to let it dry. And it's really too wet to do this. Um, what, what's happening is when I'm going back over it, I'm not, I get this paint all over me. I'm going to blend this in and make it a little purple. Yeah, I definitely need to let this dry a little bit more. It's, it's too wet, so it's reactivating it, so the colors are actually mixing. Oh, thanks, Dixie Bell. So the colors are actually mixing. So I actually just put this coat on a little bit faster than I thought. Um, but I will let you guys go tonight. Thank you for hanging out. Um, I know that was kind of a short... A short live. Um, I will have pictures of several projects coming soon. Like I said, this one over here just needs the glaze. That's the one that we did last week. Um, it just needs the glaze on it. It's already been protected. Um, so thanks again, you guys. Take care. Have a great night. You can like and follow me on my page. Um, you can find your local retailer with the link again. Join the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group. All that information is in the description, as well as check out the new DBTV. Thanks, Philippa. It was good to see you on again. You guys take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.